Well, I got more modelling done than I thought I might and less modelling done than I'd like. Welcome to this week's Table Talk. Hello and welcome to this week's Table Talk. Welcome to Model Kit Stuff. My name is Jason and I always start this video with a big thank you to my new subscribers and my subscribers of old. And, and this week I saw my subscriber um, intake uh, restore itself to pre-copyright um, uh, volume. So that was really, really nice. Um, and I think that's that's because I managed to get, um, I managed to finish getting the remasters of the Scharnhorst videos out. And um, yeah, so all those videos are out there. I've still got some to do on Endeavour and I've still got some to do on the Beaufort. Um, but we are getting there. People were sort of questioning me when I said that the Scharnhorst would probably be a two year build. And yet we are nearly four months into it and I'm still on step one. So uh, I think I think you'll find I'll be right about two years. Anyway, enough of Sean Horse because it's not Sean Horse week. A big welcome to all of you new subscribers. If you have not watched this video before, Table Talk is something we do every week. And it's just a bit of a catch up. What's happening on the channel? What happened last week? What's coming up? Long term plans? What happened on the modeling bench? All that sort of stuff. And if we've got some news, then we talk about that as well. And we've got all sorts of little bits and pieces to talk about um, this week. So let's crack on with that. Firstly, let's rewind to what was happening last week. So last weekend, I had a busy weekend um, because we were getting ready for floors to be laid in the living room. So this lot all got packed away, folded away. Um, if you're uh, relatively new to the channel, you perhaps don't realise that all of this folds in and it turns into a cupboard on casters. I can push it into the corner of the room. It's very cool. Uh, quite an expensive bit of kit. Um, I have to, had to import it from the USA. Um, uh, you, you can get them in the UK, but they're nowhere near as robust as this one. Um, yeah, and it is so far it's done me really, really well, and I'm still still pleased with it. Nearly two years on, I, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, this all got packed away so that I could put sofas in that corner there, and um, we had furniture in the attic and furniture in our bedroom, and. Then on Saturday, I was lifting floors. So we had wood floor down that was sort of clicked together. So it, once you got rid of the, the edges around the skirting, it, it lifted fairly quickly. But underneath that was a, a, a sponge, which they'd glued down. <laughs> so there we are with wallpaper uh, scrapers scraping off this, this foam, it took forever. Um, but we got it all done. Um, and got everything up to the 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 tip and um, I, yeah then on the Sunday the only thing we had to, left to do was uh, pack away the sofas and the telly and stuff last minute so anyway all went to plan new floors in I'll show you a picture of that now and we're happy with it it's not that dissimilar to what we've removed um, but it does look a bit more authentic and it's certainly more expensive and a better quality product um, and it doesn't have the last one um, they had like a bevel on all the way around it so you've got all these little grooves all the way around it this is totally flush so it looks a lot better um, and so that's sort of the the first well no the second stage in um, reorganizing and decorating the the living room the first stage was removing the fireplace which is what put the hole in the floor in the first place although it had been um, uh, damaged by our late dog so um, yeah it's nice to have that in and um, I built up the two new stand lamps but um, that was done after the photograph I think so they're not in there um, so um, I thought we'd agreed the wallpaper color um, and I'm told that we haven't, but we did, we definitely did. Um, anyway, uh, so 
we're under pressure to get that done now. We've we've contacted the decorator, but not, he's not got back to us yet. Uh, and new sofas are about three, four weeks away, something like that. It was a nine-week lead time. So um, it's all starting to come together there. But the upshot was, there was a plus and a minus. The upshot was I got less time to do some modelling. I did in the Saturday morning manage to do an episode of Endeavour. So that was perfect. That's my main goal for a Saturday anyway. Ordinarily, I might have got two done, but um, I managed to get one done um, early in the morning. Uh, and then I was, uh, I was busy. And then... Um, this got packed away on the Sunday afternoon. So on the Sunday morning, I did manage to do some uh, B17, and here she is. So uh, I have the first part of the interior in. Get that into shot for you there. So yeah, happy with that. It's all gone together really uh, nicely, and I'm happy with the look and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm just painting the just got to painting the wood, um, but we'll do a uh, we'll do an update for Sunday, and you can see where I'm up to. I didn't get as much done as I'd normally do on a Sunday. I would have got all of the interior finished uh, and possibly uh, moved on to the turret normally, but we 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 didn't quite get that far. So I think wood graining uh, on these uh, fraud front uh, floor surfaces um, is the next next step with that. So we did get some done, but then um, on Monday and Tuesday, I was working from home while the floors are being laid uh, and this is all folded up. And this desk here um, became my, my work desk, which it usually is anyway, but it, it was set up in a, in a different position. So I didn't have quite so much space, but I couldn't do anything after work or anything like that. And then, Tuesday I managed to put it all back together which was why it's been rearranged a little bit don't know if you can see that but um, I've, I've basically changed sides I know it's as good as a rest and to a change um, but, and it did give me an opportunity to give everything a nice good clean down so the table got cleaned down um, I managed to uh, spill um, panel liner um, a couple of weeks ago and um, it was all under the mats and stuff so I managed to clean that off so uh, you know um, it was a worthwhile exercise just doing that so that's sort of where we got to um, during the course of the week and and with the uh, uh, modeling and what have you like I say not as much done as I would have liked um, but um, it is still the um, modelling week. I'm recording this actually on the Thursday rather than the Friday. Um, Thursday morning, it's dark, which is why you've got artificial light. Um, because today I've got a dad daughter day with my youngest, Alice, and we're having an Xbox day. So she had all sorts of options to go to the zoo and all that sort of stuff. Now let's have an Xbox day. So um, she clearly wants her, her butt whooping, so we can do that. No problem at all. Um, so yeah, I've not played on the Xbox for years. Um, so um, she likes... She likes sort of um, strategy games and that sort of stuff, and I do as well. So, so that'll be um, a, a fun day because uh, Alice's school is broken up for Easter uh, and everyone else is either at work or college. So I've taken a, a day's holiday um, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. So that'll be brilliant. Um, so uh, I'm recording it early because then um, on Friday everyone's here and it'll be difficult to record this uh, and find a quiet uh, spot to do it. So recording it a bit uh, a bit earlier. So I may still get some time on this on on Friday evening when the um, video is running. So uh, that's where we got to. Um, Pretty much. So there might be a little bit more than this to talk about in, in the uh, Sunday um, update. Right then. Um, so what happened on the channel during the course of the week? Well, Monday was that um, display sprue stand. And I think most people agreed it, it was probably a, a waste of money. Um, 
and uh, it was just funny that the first time you tried to put a sprue in the universal sprue holder, it wouldn't hold it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not. I, I wouldn't be rushing out to buy to buy one. Obviously, I've got one now, and I, you know, I bought it with the money that the channel generates, so that we could have a look at it. Something a bit different. I've not seen anyone else review it, so that's why I thought I'd do it. But yeah, quite frankly, there's lots of other solutions you could use, and homemade ones are probably better. If indeed you feel like you need a sprue rack, but I don't, I don't feel that I need one really. So it is up there at the back. You can see it um, in in a shelf. I might use it possibly for um, holding sprues if I've painted something on a sprue or something like that, which is um, one. Uh, one of the subscribers suggested. It's a good idea. I don't do a lot of painting on a sprue, but um, you know, I, I do from time to time depending on what it is. So. I don't know. I'm sure I'll find a use for it. Anyway, that was Monday. Then on Wednesday, we had the Tiger Moth. Now, Airfix have just brought out the new Tiger Moth. It's been out about a fortnight. Um, uh, yeah, about a fortnight. It, it's, it's been out. It's been released. So in military markings this time, I think. Um, so that's now available. Um, so you should be able to get it anywhere that's distributing Airfix kits. And... Um, it's a lovely kit. It builds really nicely. It, it's not overly complex. Um, you don't have to rig it, but if you do, that just um, adds to the authenticity of it. I did the um, the cables running down the fuselage, but didn't rig inside the wings, and I can't re can't remember why now. Can't for the life of me, I can't think why. But anyway, I didn't. Um, but yeah, it, it was a, a, I remember it being a lot of fun and it builds into a nice model. It's, it's nicer than the Chipmunk. It goes together better than the Chipmunk. I, I really enjoyed building the Tiger Moth. Um, yeah, and it looks quite colourful when it's done. So um, yeah, all good. So I, I got that one free with an order. So I'll probably build the silver uh, one with the yellow stripes. But if you've not got a Chipmunk and you fancy something a little bit different, a little um uh, change of pace it's a lovely little kit so um I'd, I'd you know i don't do recommendations but i'd certainly say if you like your aircraft and you've not built one it's worth having a play with it it was it was quite a quite a bit of fun um so yeah that was that was where we got to and then of course we had the build on a friday night and if you don't know um, all of my builds go out on a Friday at 9 p.m. UK time, London time, um, and they're always premiere. So we have live chat and you're welcome to come and watch the video and talk to people, talk to me, ask questions. Um, you know, we have a, a, a good number of regulars there uh, and then we're always seeing new faces pop in and out, which is lovely. Uh, what you'll have watched last night was the last Bowfighter, um, which was edited and put together on Da Vinci. <sighs> we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so, yeah, that's Bowfighter done with. Um, so that leads nicely into what I'm planning to do with the build videos uh, now going forward. So... Um, We've got the next one up is the matchbox build, but I'm conscious there's some people wanting to see how I'm getting on with the B17 build. So what I'm gonna do for um, a very short period is run my uh, build videos on a three week rotation. And that's gonna do two things. It's gonna allow us to kick off the matchbox build, the Char B and the Renault, um, it's also going to allow me to get the B17 up and running so people can see how we've started putting that together because um, I know there's some people waiting to see that um, and it also buys me a little bit of time on the Sean Horst because with the Sean Horst um, uh, I've been doing all the, the wriggles, the little eyebrows, the photo etch eyebrows and hand irons and weld seams and all that sort of stuff. And when I've finished videoing that, it makes a really nice video. You'll see that next week. Um, but I've then got to do the other side and there's no point in filming that because you've already seen it. There's nothing new there, but I've still got to do it. And it's still many hours of work. So, um, 
it buys me some time with with Shanhorst material. So that's that's sort of the plan. We'll put them in a three week rotation. We'll we'll, we'll perhaps talk about what's coming up next week because um, I'm changing some plans on that, and that'll maybe. Um, help uh, help understand how that's all going to fit in. But that's the plan. And then when the Shah B is finished, because I don't know whether that's going to be two or three videos at this moment in time. I've started editing it. Um, so uh, I, I suspect it, it might be three because we do focus on the painting uh, rather than the building on that. Um, so in, in which case, that's sort of like a... Uh, a nine week period when we'll have three videos rotating. As soon as the Matchbox build is out of the way, we'll go back to B17 and Sean Horse. And then when the B17 is finished, we'll be on the little Tempo diorama. Um, I've been um, sorting out the base. So the base is ready to go um, uh, on the Tempo. So uh, it's been having a bit of a bit of a clean and some bits and pieces of glue where figures have been that needed removing and some touch up and bits and pieces so that that's that's all uh, getting nicely done so that um, I can hit the ground running with the with the tempo and um, showed you last week those figures um, which I'm really pleased with so I've got everything I need for the for the tempo um, I've got a load of research pictures as well of um, tempos in various states and it's really important even looking at ones that are being um, reconstructed and put back together. You know, um, the, the, it appears um, that the bonnet isn't metal, that it's fiberglass or some form of a uh, equivalent from, from, the, uh, from the late 30s, early 40s. I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't seem to rust. Um, so that's an interesting thing to know, whereas the, the roof and things will, will rust through. And the floor pan is all wood, you know, there's, there's a, a basic metal chassis, but the rest of it's a wood, there's lots of wood in there. So lots of wood weathering rather than metal chipping to do. So, um, and, and dirt streaks rather than rust streaks. So there's lots, and maybe bubbling paint and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, some some interesting things to work through with the with the weathering of the tempo. So I've been collecting some information for that. So um, yeah, that's that's where we got to last week. So um, shall we talk about what's coming up in the week ahead? Busy week for videos coming up. So tomorrow we've got a B seventeen update. Then on Monday we're looking at a publication. Um, centered around the FAMO, um, which is um, I've got as a tank transporter, the Tamiya one to build at some point. Um, then on Tuesday, we've got Endeavour Part 11, which is continuing the build of the uh, cabin. Then on Wednesday, we've got a first impressions of this. This is new tool, newly released, came out. Um, I got it... Uh, uh, Sunday or Monday, I can't remember what day it turned up. Um, so it's been out about a week now and those of you that follow a um, long time friend of this channel, uh, Jeff Donahue uh, and his channel, um, he's, he's starting to build it. He put out episode one which was just looking at what's in the box. Um, so I assume he's about to build it. Uh, um, uh, probably come at a good time because uh, one or two of his other builds seem to be getting towards the end now. So um, I've had a look through the box and I've got to say, um, I've, I've filled the, filmed the first impressions and it's ready to go. Um, it's not the best kit in the world, but it's a really, really nice kit, if that makes sort of sense. Um, there's one or two little niggles in it, um, but... I was a bit concerned because it's dad it's dad's work and I've been sort of holding off um because I got my fingers burnt with the with the U9 um which was a horrible kit and overpriced for what it was in to be honest um and and not particularly accurate and they got things messed up and and what have you anyway um that put me off dad's work a little bit um, then I saw this built up at Telford 
and it was stunning um, and it's so very different it's a uh, it's based on a bus chassis uh, what the Vomag's um, pre-war bus and basically what they've done is use the sa the chassis the uh, the front engine compartment the part of the cab and then put a, a, a gun on it in the middle where, and uh, it's basically based on their on their bus so with an, an armored um, top on it um, and actually does work have done a very decent job of it um, the instructions are not as arty farty as the uh, as the u9 uh, ones were so they're much more functional although at one point they suddenly go pale gray when you get to build the gun um, the the line drawings go from being black on a sort of this sort of sandy color mottled background to a very pale gray and it's hard to see um, so why they've done that I don't know um, but yeah so not perfect but a lovely kit and something a bit different um, so I'm actually really looking forward to it but it's one of those things that, that, that there's funny little things that niggle me like it says 100% Daswork production uh, and then it says in cooperation with three different companies so so it's not all been done by Daz Work if it if got three different companies there and and in that list of three companies is not Tacom who actually made the plastic parts so there's at least four so I'm never really sure what Daz Work do I think they perhaps just do the the design and then organize someone to do the instruction book and someone to do the box and and what have you um, if you buy it right now though the initial one comes with an additional uh, booklet which has um, interestingly it has some research photos and stuff mainly colorized ones so be careful of them um, and then they have someone build the vehicle um, in a format that you can't build from the box why would you do that why would you showcase not this this model uh, so it's got a shield on it and all sorts of stuff so someone's built it as a project to um, on a, a famous one that's been left on a monastery in Hungary but it needs all sorts of scratch building well that's no good is it you know you're supposed to be showcasing your model it's little niggly bits like that but the actual plastic parts themselves really really nice really nicely done uh, like I say just one or two little niggles with it but in the main a very 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 nice kit and if you think you might be interested in the subject just get one because because it's lovely there's no reason not to get it so uh, i'm really pleased with the purchase um and um how do i know that tacon made the plastic parts uh, because as always or as often the case with a tacon box the lid is too big <laughs> i don't know how that happens but it does very strange so yeah uh, so that was my stash ad this week it's been on pre-order since november and um i got it at a good price so i'm happy uh yeah really nice so grab that while you can would be my recommendation if you're interested in that um so yeah so that's what's coming up on wednesday and then uh thursday i'll probably have some more uh, remaster videos out i'm going to try and get the uh, missing parts of the Beaufort out and then we'll concentrate on on the endeavor um, and then on Sat uh, Friday uh, we will have the next Sean horse part which is um, photo etch I think I'm fairly sure it's um, putting photo etch on um, and bits and pieces like that so uh, final sand and and what I call step two I break I break down hull construction into three steps there's the initial shaping and modifying then there's sanding and and filling and detailing then there's painting those are my my three steps and we're going to weather the Sean Horst so um, there's three different stages in weathering as well so lots more to come from that so yeah really really looking forward to uh getting some paint on the shan horse which means i can then have a play um with that um a series um swallow tail um 
airbrush from uh, uh, gallery really looking forward to that as well so that is sort of where that gets us up to where we are um, and what's coming coming up in the week ahead so if we do shan horse on friday then what we'll do um the following friday will be sharp uh, b1 and then we'll do b17 and then we're back to shan horse so that'll be uh that'll be the way we do it so you're two weeks away from seeing the first uh, build diary episode for the the b17 so you know exactly what's uh, what's coming with that now i'm on holiday uh this week from work i've got 10 days off taken four days holiday but with the bank holidays and the weekends i've got a block of 10 days so my my hope is that on most of those days it won't be all but most of those days i'll get some modeling time in the mornings um, at least before people start getting up and then we'll go from there i've got some stuff to do in the garden um, and if the weather's okay and as it's school holidays we might try and go to the cinema I'd, i've not looked to see what's on um, and um, you know we might go out on a day trip blackpool zoo or something like that blackpool zoo brilliant zoo if you if you've never been if you live in the northwest blackpool zoo is better than chester zoo because they've got animals you can see um, a bit meaningless if you're in in canada or the or the us or australia or wherever uh, chester zoo is famous because uh, um, it, there's a tv program around it um, and they and they focus on the animals but that's the only time you see the animals at chester zoo they have lovely big enclosures sympathetic to their natural environment of the animals the animals shy away from the public so you don't get to see them you can walk around all day and hardly hardly see a thing other than things like elephants they're a bit bit hard to miss um but the uh um so i mean you do get to see animals but you, you really struggle in in some areas um they have an area called the islands and you can walk around there and go on a boat trip around there and you never see this never see a thing um same with the gorillas and all on all that sort of stuff but uh at uh, blackpool zoo yeah you get to see them in fact alice a few years ago was stored um looking to the at the gorilla and she had a hand on the glass looking through the glass at the gorilla and the uh, gorillas and orangutans it was and this this gorilla put its hand on alice's hand and she's like oh my god so yeah um it, it was really quite cool so uh, we quite like blackpool zoo and it's only half an hour away it's actually closer than chester for me um so we might do that I, I i really don't know no big fixed plans other than i need to get some stuff done in the garden um think about vegetable planting i'm thinking of doing more herbs this year um i'm, I'm eating a lot more veg uh, i've lost with my uh, uh zoe app um and eating in line with my, what my gut microbiome needs um and I, I basically I, i've not become vegetarian i'll never become vegetarian because i used to be a butcher and i like meat um but i'm not eating low quality uh, meat products that that may have a um a, a fatter uh, a higher proportion of fat i'm eating high quality meat if i eat meat um but majority of my meals are now vegetarian and more to the point whole foods not um um and uh, not manufactured in in any way and as a result i've lost six centimeters now off my waistline so this is quite baggy now it used to be um the opposite of baggy fairly tight um and some of my jumpers are looking a bit big on me now so that's great it means i get to help go out and do some clothes shopping which i you know not a fan of but before we go on holiday we'll have to get some some stuff so i'm holding out for now we go on holiday the end of may so uh some point middle of may we'll have to do some some clothes shopping i think uh, and get some better fitting clothes which is all good news because i've not been hungry uh, i've enjoyed it um i joined something um something called yes chef um has one of my favorite all-time chefs on there jamie oliver who's basically jamie oliver's taught me to cook um i've been following him since for 25 years since he's been on the since he was first on the tv um with the naked chef when i was sort of in my mid-20s and he really got me into into 
cooking. I enjoyed cooking anyway. He always used to help my mum out with a Sunday roast. My job was to, to make the gravy the, the, the proper way, not from granules and all that nonsense. Um, so I've always enjoyed um, cooking, but Jamie Oliver sort of taught me to cook. Um, and um, he's on there, and, um, and there's one or two other chefs, some I know of, um, I've heard of and know a bit about others I've never heard of, but they're all very famous in their own right. Um, and it's all what they cook at home and um, not fussy like restaurant stuff. So that's been um, giving me some inspiration as well. So, um, And that leads into a question I was asked last week about how I was getting on with the sourdough. Uh, and the answer is not very well. <laughs> I've had three attempts, all of which have failed. Um, they, they start off very well. Uh, with the starter and then th there's a point where you take half out and then put the ingredients back in again and at that point it dies and I even watched Paul Hollywood who in the UK is a relatively famous baker runs a famous program and um, actually he's, he's his brother is a baker as well in in the northwest, and um, I, I've I've worked with his company, well, indirectly with his his company in the past. But um, even Paul Hollywood, foolproof how to make sourdough recipe, and it died, didn't work at all. Um, anyway, my sister-in-law has um, given me some tips, so over Easter I will be trying sourdough again and when it's successful I will show you um, but until then I won't. Um, I'm also going to be making uh, fresh pasta which I like to do but uh, I don't make fresh pasta dough uh, very often because it's so cheap to make but there's nothing better than, than fresh. Um, so I'll be doing some some baking, uh, some, well not baking, cooking, I, I can't bake to save my life. Cooking I get and I understand, baking I don't. Um, so I'll be doing some cooking, be doing some gardening. Um, I'm working on a Lego castle for my daughter who wants a Lego castle, so uh, doing a bit of that. And um, yeah, just um, chilling out and not thinking about work because work's been so stressful for... 10 months now um, I, I need a, a proper break frequently from that so yeah really looking forward to the Easter break but we'll get some modeling done um, and get the B17 pushed along quite seriously so we won't get it finished over this this week because I want to also get the Queen Mary 2 finished that's one of my plans as you can see, I've already got more than I can chew for the Easter holidays. And if I'm not careful, I'll start stre stressing myself out. And I really, really want to relax. So I'll probably do one morning on the Scharnhorst, one morning on the B17, couple of mornings on the Queen Mary 2, then back to the Scharnhorst and get it ready for paint. And then back to the B17 and move it on. So it'll be something like that over the next 10 days. I'll give you an update in the next table talk. So I think that pretty much covers everything for this week. Bit of a short one, um, I, just because I've not got enough to talk about and I'm not going to sort of make stuff up just to just to keep it to an hour or something. Uh, table talk video it is what it is. Sometimes it's half an hour, sometimes it's an hour. It's as long as it needs to take. But yeah, um, it's been a good week all in all. We've got the insides in, in the fuselage. We've got a really nice um, stash ad uh, and I've got new floors. So um, yeah, it's all been a good week. And there's less of me than there used to be, and I am really enjoying that. Um, and occasionally I go, oh, you know what, I'm really missing this. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll have a chocolate bar or something like that, but I hardly touch chocolate anymore. Easter coming up, I've got one Easter egg, that's my limit. Um, the, the, the girls are going to buy me, obviously. And then, um, yeah, I, what I'm actually finding is since I'm eating a lot more vegetables that I'm finding some foods quite bland. So I, I did homemade burgers. Everyone loves my homemade burgers. I, I'm, I make them from scratch, from mincing the meat and, and, and uh, making the patty. And, and then I build up the burger and we put onions on there and I put salad on there and uh, I make my own sauce for it, um, uh, which is... Um, 
It's a really nice sauce that I make actually. Um, it, it's it's um, like a spicy mayonnaise mix and um, uh, and we do all that and some sliced tomato and all that sort of stuff and it's it's like that. And I tried it and it was bland because I'm used to all of these different flavors uh, of vegetables and the burger was bland and I, you know I put mustard in it and pepper and all sorts of stuff and sometimes we would put some herbs in and it was just bland uh, same with sausage and I used to be absolute sausage lover and I had uh, a bit of a sausage I didn't have a full one and I thought not much to this really is there um, I preferred my broccoli so it's really interesting. I always viewed a meal as meat with vegetables on the side and now I'm viewing a meal as vegetables and I might have a bit of meat with it. Uh, and I'm feeling the difference. My energy levels, my sleep's better, uh, my ablutions are better, uh, my skin's better, um, just everything. My get up and go is better. So yeah, all round, you know, if it's an expensive thing to do, Zoe, but um, if you do do it, you will absolutely feel the benefit. Anyway, enough about all of that. Um, I will see you tomorrow in the B17 update. And until then, you enjoy your modeling and uh, thanks for looking in. And whoa, whoa, I nearly forgot. There's some special people in this hobby, isn't there? And I need to say thank you to a couple of them. Lee Fennell, Captain Charlemagne. A massive thank you for your contributions this week. Uh, really helpful uh, for the channel. Um, we're slowly building a pot of uh, money up again for some kits. I ordered a kit this week. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm really excited about it. it looks tremendous. Um, it's another vehicle kit. Um, so um, we are back to being able to buy uh, models again after spending on the camera. Um, so yeah, all, all sorted. Um, so thank you guys. The channel is self-funding. Um, so things like this, they get purchased by the revenue from the channel. So if you want to contribute, I don't do membership or buy me a coffee or Patreon. Um, there's a link to my PayPal below. You can put it in and I, I get 100% of that for the channel it doesn't get spent on me gets spent on the channel uh, and it just keeps the uh, the content coming because we've got something to focus on um, so thank you very much if you do contribute and finally my last thing because i did say that we would talk about it da vinci i had an utter nightmare with da vinci and i have uninstalled it and i won't be using it have managed to get my um imovie back up and running it's still the world's most popular free um, software with good reason. It's intuitive and easy to use. And I've now worked out how I can upload in 4K. So last week's Table Talk was my first genuine 4K video. Hopefully this will be the same. Um, so I know what I'm doing with that. The DaVinci, however, um, put some stuff in DaVinci um, accidentally, so then deleted it out. Um, da Vinci didn't warn me, um, and I was I would not have comprehended for a moment that it would do this. But as I deleted it out of Da Vinci, it also deleted it from its place of origin. So um, the stuff that I had on my um, uh, wireless um, backed up memory, um, it got wiped. So that was nine years of photographs of my children, the holidays of my grandfather, my grandfather's 100th birthday, um, his funeral, um, my a lot of my family history stuff, the book I've been writing, um, all gone, uh, which is about my grandfather and, and, and his two brothers in the Navy, um, all, all gone forever can't get it back, can't retrieve it. Um, uh, photos of Alice as, as, as a baby, it just wiped, absolutely wiped. Um, and uh, there isn't a word that I can use on video to explain 
how I felt about that, but I won't be using DaVinci again. I've uninstalled it. And you know, I, you can argue it's my fault for not understanding it to do that, but you'd expect it to give you a warning. And actually I wouldn't expect it to have ha, to have removed it. Why would it need to do that? So uh, I clearly didn't understand something. I'm not very techy. Uh, DaVinci I found to be overly complicated. There's several ways to do something. Why? If one way works, just do the one and make it the simple one. Um, so I could work DaVinci. I have uploaded videos from DaVinci, but I found it needlessly complicated for an amateur uh, um, filmmaker like me. So I'm back to iMovie. It works really, really well. Um, it does everything that DaVinci does, but it does it much more simply. And when I say everything that DaVinci does, I mean everything that I need, it does, um, plus a bit more. So I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Anyway, have a great week. Enjoy your modelling, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Hi, and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee. So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.